A few weeks ago, I made a video about the Flipper Zero, and in that video, I talked about how you can install the firmware and get started, and I also demoed a couple of the little features of the tool. But there are a bunch of other things you can do with the Flipper Zero, and there are also a bunch of custom firmwares available that you can install on the Flipper Zero, and those come with a bunch of different functions and different apps that are being developed by the community. So I wanted to make this video to show how you can install some custom firmwares that are a little bit different than that basic firmware that you can get from the developer, and also show some of the different things that those custom firmwares can do. There are a bunch of different firmwares out there available in the community, but some of the most popular ones are the Unleashed firmware and the Rogue Master firmware. There are tons of documentation on both of these firmwares, and the communities are pretty active, and they do pretty regular updates. But there is a third firmware that I wanted to specifically cover in this video, and that is the Extreme firmware. I believe this firmware has gained popularity recently because there are a couple specific features that have been implemented in the dev build of this firmware that has been getting a lot of publicity. So for this video, I'm going to install the dev version of this firmware, and then I'm going to show a couple of those new features that were implemented for this firmware. Now, if you want to look into this firmware and play with the most recent release version, then you can just click over here down on the bottom right and click on releases and install it. And you can also do the same with the Rogue Master or the um, Unleashed firmware. Just um, go to releases and you can download the file and install it with the QFlipper application, which I'm about to go over. But to get the dev build of the Extreme firmware, you actually have to go to their Discord and they have a link to their Discord right here on the GitHub. Once once you join their Discord, you do have to give yourself the role to access the dev updates channel. But once you have access to that channel, there's a bot in this channel that will give you a link to the new dev build anytime there's a new one that's pushed. And once you see one of these build succeeded links, then you just click on download firmware TGZ. And then once you have that file, then we can get ready to load it onto our flipper. Once we have that firmware downloaded, we're going to launch the Q Flipper application, which I talked about in my last video I made about the Flipper. If you want to go back and watch that to see how to install the Q Flipper application, you can do that. I'll probably do a link like up here in the card or something, but also you can just Google Q Flipper and you'll probably find it. Once I have the Q Flipper app open on my PC, I'm going to take my Flipper and plug it into the USB cable. And when I do that, there is an option that it tells me that there's a new version of the firmware that I can update. So if I wanted to, I could click this update button and that would update the base firmware from Flipper Zero. But I don't want to use that firmware. I want to use the dev build of that extreme firmware that I just downloaded. So instead of clicking that update button, I'm going to click install from file. And when I selected that file from my downloads directory, it's going to ask me install from file and I'm going to click install. Now it's going to go through the install process to upload the firmware and then apply that update. And once that update is finished, then we'll come back and we'll look at the firmware and see some of the things we can do with it. A few minutes later. So once that update finishes, I'm just going to click continue. Now I'm just going to maximize the view so you can see the screen on my flipper since it's kind of hard to see what is going on on the little display with the camera. And now I'm just going to go through the menus a little bit and show you some of the things that you can do with the extreme firmware. So when you first install that firmware, it takes you through a little bit of a walkthrough of some of the features that it has, but then you can actually hit the center button and you can scroll through the menu, which is a pretty nice little UI for this little bitty screen and what they do with the real estate that you have to work with. But specifically, one of the things that I wanted to demo for this video was under apps. If you go to Bluetooth, there is an option for BLE spam. And if you select that, you can scroll through. There are eight different options under BLE spam right now. And the one that you may have seen, it was kind of going viral a little bit on like TikTok and I saw a bunch of YouTube shorts for it and different YouTube videos and things. And that is the iOS 17 lockup crash. Right now there's actually a bug in iOS 17 that as far as I'm aware has still not been patched yet. And this bug allows you to use a Flipper Zero or presumably any type of device that allows you to send Bluetooth low energy requests and it allows you to spam the device and you can just send several different uh, connection requests trying to emulate a bunch of different Bluetooth low energy devices. And if you run that spam for a few seconds on iOS 17 devices, it actually will completely lock up the device. It essentially like makes it unusable. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a iOS 17 device that is available right now for me to demo this. 
but I have seen several videos of this, and as far as I'm aware, there haven't been any sort of updates or anything from Apple to fix this, so I'll be watching to see when and if they actually fix this. But there are other things that you can do with this BLE spam option in the Flipper Zero as well. Some of them actually just sends an alert for a specific type of device, like you can send an alert to pair a Samsung watch, a Samsung Buds, and I have an Android phone right here that I can actually use to demo the Android device connect function. I'm just going to hold up this Android phone so you can actually see what's happening on the screen. And I'm going to start this Bluetooth low energy spam with the Flipper Zero. And when I click start, now you see that there are connection spam happening for some earbuds. And if I close that one, now there's some different earbuds that pop up. Close that one, some different earbuds, and it will just keep sending this spam, which will not actually lock up the entire device like it does currently on iOS 17, but it is very annoying and can essentially make a device nearly unusable because you're just constantly getting pop-ups. And you can also do the same thing with Apple devices with a very similar attack. And as far as I know, the only way to actually prevent it from happening on your mobile device is to actually turn off Bluetooth, which is an annoying thing to do if someone is doing this kind of spam to your device. But as far as I know, the iOS 17 is the only version that will become fully locked up and completely unusable, which is a pretty big problem that Apple should address pretty quickly. Hopefully they will be doing a patch pretty soon. But this is just one of those little functions and new little tricks and things that have been developed by the community. And depending on what you want to do with it, you may want to look into different kind of firmwares. And as I showed earlier, it is very easy to install a new firmware. You just have to find the source of the developers where they're uploading that source code for the firmware, which is most likely going to be GitHub. And then you just need to use the QFlipper app to install that firmware. And anytime you want to go back to the original firmware, it's very easy to just go right here and click the install button on the QFlipper, or you can do it through the mobile app and you'll just be back to the base firmware that I showed in the first video I made. So that makes this device very easy to use and customize and try different kinds of things. And if anything breaks or you want to go back to a different version of something, it's very easy to just revert to whatever you were doing before or start fresh. Or whatever you want to do. So I hope that was interesting and helpful to anyone who might be looking into getting a flipper for the first time or maybe they just got one or they had one for a while and it's just been sitting on the shelf and they haven't been doing anything with it. These are just a couple things that you can do with it and how you can get started with some different firmwares. So if you like this and want me to do more with the Flipper Zero, maybe demo some other things it can do, or maybe show off some specific types of attacks you can do with it, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get some more videos like this.